Hello there, you're once more welcome to the Glory Realm Devotional. I, I believe that God has something wonderful for you today. You know, uh, we're living in a time where a number of things are just uh, a strong reflection of the fact that people just only want to associate with a group, associate with certain persons and you know, personalities, you know, subsequation of the place, the beauty of the place, but nothing really serious about the spiritual life. Um, a lot of people have a form of godliness according to what we will read um, from the scripture, but there's no sense of the presence and power of God. And that's what we are looking at today. We want to go beyond religious forms. And let's go now to the scripture from the book of 2 Timothy chapter number 3 from verse number 1 to 5. But understand this, that in the last days will come set in perilous time of great stress and trouble. Troubles had to deal with and had to bear. Verse 2. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered, lovers of money and aroused by an inordinate greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant and contemptuous, boasters, they will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. Verse 3 says, they will be without natural human affection, callous and inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truth or appeasement. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce haters of good. Verse number four says, they will be treacherous, betrayers, rash, and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. Verse 5. For although they hold a form of piety, true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession. Avoid all such people turn away from them and if you put this in the light of what is happening today you see the last verse says avoid them turn away from them we have a lot of people to avoid in our present day and if you speak about this even in churches today people will brand you as haters and you say we're living in a time where the world just wants us to have a form of godliness but denying the real stuff but you know we cannot settle for anything less we must live the life that Jesus died for us to live if we have to live in this religious form thing then he has died in vain but you see he has not died in vain because many people are in heaven right now and many people are living Christian life that is far from just being religious so today we are looking at beyond religious form and I want you to contemplate on a number of things you see most people have been able to discern that what they really need is truly spiritual but you see the problem and the most unfortunate thing about that is that they are religious instead of actually going for the meeting they end up just being religious and that's very unfortunate that which is unable to quench the thirst of the soul is not qualified to be called worship. You see, religion will not quench the thirst of your soul. And you can call that worship. It may be called worship service or some form of religious uh, liturgy, but the truth is that it's not worship. When we talk about worship, Jesus told us what, what true worship is from John chapter number four. 
He said, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If it is simple rules and regulations without a divine intimate relationship that transforms the soul, it is not worship. That's taken from my book, Find the French, Fresh Passion to Worship. If it is just that which is on the surface, it's not worship. If it is more than religion, when it is all over, you will have clarity and true satisfaction. Mere religion offers temporal escape from the troubles of life. If it is mere religion, it just offers to you just temporal escape. But true worship reveals to you the way out of your troubles. In fact, you are launched into a place of worship, a place of, re of relationship with God that whatever is not of God is completely cut off from your life. So you can live the life that He destined you to, to live. You see, Af African tradition, traditional religion, and most other religious worship in places like India and some other part of the world, is uh, on the premise of fear. People have to appease the gods so that the gods don't get angry. They have to offer the sacrifice so that you know certain things won't happen. It is based up on fear. Hence, the endless rituals and activities to avoid the anger of the gods. But true worship is motivated by an intimate relationship which stirs up songs of worship to the one you love. As you worship in songs and as you pray, it becomes so easy to relate with the one you love. You may want to ask yourself, that which you identified is that really worship? What is the motivation behind your worship? What you do? What is the motivation behind it? Is it a mere religious affiliation or an intimate relationship with God Almighty? Do you have an intimate relationship with God? Is your worship experience impactful enough to supply the true craving, I mean, to satisfy the true craving of your soul and that of many others around you? Is it enough? If the experience keeps coming to your heart long after you have left the place and you just get, you know, you just, you, you find yourself keep being blessed again and again, it is very possible you had a good encounter with God. But if it ends when you walked out of that place, what you had was mere religion. The God we serve is alive. He loves us. He wants to walk with us. He wants to talk with us. God has something much more than attendance of certain religious activities. He wants to, he want to live with you. He wants to be in you. He wants to reveal himself to you. You know, when we walk with him, the world will see God in our lives. Do you have a religious form or a relationship with God? Think about that. I hope that you have a good relationship with him. And if you do, I'm telling you, you're going to have a wonderful time today. Thank you for being a part of this broadcast today. It has been a wonderful time with you. I pray that the glory of God will lift you from one dimension of of intimacy with God to a deeper and much more glorious dimension of intimacy. Thank you for sharing this time with me. God bless you.